My name is uh, Dr. Alexander Kudukov, and I'm a urological oncologist at the Fox Chase Cancer Center. My position regarding the partial and radical nephrectomy debate is that radical nephrectomy should be considered in select patients and really should not be considered a therapeutic sin, but in fact may be the voice of reasons if patients are appropriately selected. And I'll start by saying that in 2013, uh, in the hands of a capable and well-trained uh, kidney surgeon, virtually all T1 and many T2 renal masses are amenable to partial nephrectomy. However, when making decisions regarding enhancing renal mass, these decisions must be made in the context of each individual patient. And really, different risks shape different patients' clinical scenarios. And I think we would all agree that there's a spectrum of patients with an enhancing renal mass. And on one end of the spectrum, there's clearly the young patient with a simple renal mass who has an absent contralateral kidney. Decisions are very clear cut in that patient. Partial nephrectomy is a game changer. On the other end of the spectrum is a elderly patient with an anatomically complex renal mass who is not a candidate for active surveillance, uh, but who has a normal contralateral kidney. And in that patient, I think we should all consider radical nephrectomy. Really, the debate between radical and partial nephrectomy boils down to risk. It is basically a balance of reduced immediate risks of radical nephrectomy versus the potential delayed benefits of partial nephrectomy. And really, in patients with complex renal masses, in other words, those that are larger, those that are deeper, that are those that are closer to the collecting system, and those that are central, anatomically complex renal masses, in some series, partial nephrectomy is associated with greater than 20% uh, complication rate. And that's not trivial for a frail elderly patient. The overall survival association between radical, uh, between partial nephrectomy uh, when compared to radical nephrectomy is that's what's really fueled our enthusiasm to, for, for partial nephrectomy. And, you know, partial nephrectomy is definitely the reference standard. It's been adopted by the EUA and the AUA guidelines. You know, there's a lot of enthusiasm for partial nephrectomy. However, when you look at pooled analyses, for instance, there was a pooled analysis by a uh, talented young investigator, Simon Kim, from the Mayo Clinic um, <coughs> earlier this year in the uh, Journal of Urology. When you look at pooled analyses um, of uh, comparative effectiveness of this data between radical and partial nephrectomy, you know, in indeed, those authors saw a 19, almost a 20%, Survi uh, overall survival advantage to partial nephrectomy. But when you drill down deeper, partial nephrectomy in that, in, in that collective data set is associated with a 30%, 29%, a cancer specific survival advantage. The one thing we do know and we can all agree on is that radical nephrectomy taking out the entire kidney uh, uh, is not an, an oncologically inferior operation than just taking out part of the kidney, right? So how can we explain this, this uh, cancer specific survival advantage to partial nephrectomy? Well, the explanation is quite easy. It's selection bias. We as surgeons are just very good at selecting uh, patients with less aggressive tumors who are destined to live longer for more complex surgery. And in fact, appropriately adjusting for severity and, so, and selection bias in heterogeneous uh, retrospective cohorts of patients undergoing cancer-directed surgery is one of the biggest challenges of uh, modern observational studies. And there have been very talented investigators who have tried to adjust for these both measured and unmeasured confounders uh, using such statistical analyses such, such as instrumental variable analysis, and that's the paper by David Miller in, in JAMA recently. However, it is difficult to believe that no matter how sophisticated in a statistical analysis, they can appropriately adjust for the vast difference in these pre-selected cohorts. The, the ch there's just challenges with these retrospective data. You know, there's a couple of ways to go around getting over these challenges. One, we can prospectively measure on measure confounders and just do, and have more meaningful co retrospective comparisons, or it, we can sort of randomize patients and obtain randomized prospective data. But in fact, we have these data. That's, uh, that's ERTC 30904. We just can't handle these data. So ERTC 30904 randomized patients with, uh, with tumors five centimeters or less to radical versus partial nephrectomy and had an un unanticipated uh, uh, overall survival advantage to radical nephrectomy. You know, those patients, importantly, had a normal contralateral kidney. And in fact, you know, we can criticize and ignore these data and uh, sort of uh, look to the shortcomings of the trial, which there are some. However, these data completely dovetail and completely in line with the very robust data for just a lack of detectable harm for radical nephrectomy in patients in, in, with a normal contralateral kidney in those that underwent uh, donor nephrectomy. I will leave, uh, leave you with this, that when we're considering a complex partial nephrectomy in a frail patient, for whom the added complications of a partial nephrectomy are non-trivial non and may not be tolerated, we should always remember that radical nephrectomy is a good therapeutic option for that patient if they're not a candidate for active surveillance.